Man, I am so excited for what God is about to do in this place. Can we already just give him a big clap of praise right now as we're beginning this time? Come on. Praise God. You can be seated. Sit down on the outside, but don't sit down on the inside. I hope that y'all came with some faith. Somebody say faith. Lean over to your neighbor and say, I got some faith. Come on, lean over to your other neighbor and say, I got some faith. I got some faith. Man, well, I am glad we're starting off from the perfect place. Because with faith, believing, anything is possible. And so I'm excited to see what God is about to do today in this time that we have together. I'm excited that I get to bring the word to you guys right now. Our pastors, Pastors Mac and Laseth, there, there is game day. It's time. Y'all have seen it. There's a picture up right now. They're in the hospital. Come on. Praise God. Bringing another anointed child into this world. We're so excited. We're celebrating. Let's be praying for them all day long because those are our pastors. Those are our leaders, and we're supporting them, and we love them so much. So be praying for them on this special, special day. Pastor Max sent me a message earlier this week. He said, Sam, he said, I, I might need you to start preparing. I might need you to start getting the getting message together. I'm going to send you a couple of some scriptures over the next couple of weeks because I'm not really sure, you know, if I'll be there or not. And at the beginning of the week, he said, but it's 50-50. He said, I, I, I want to be there. He said, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try as hard as I can because I want to be with my authentic family. And then yesterday, in the middle of the day, I, I looked down at my phone. He says, 99%. You're in, bro. You're in, brother. You got it. And I said, okay. I said, I'm rushing home right now to, to get into it. So I, I, am just, I am just honored that I get to, to bring a word to you guys today. We have been on in this collection titled Open the Heavens. The heavens are open, guys. If you didn't know it, the heavens are open, and God's Holy Spirit is being poured out to onto those who are receiving it. That's what I know. And we've been going through a couple of secrets over these past couple of weeks. We've been, we've been unlocking and revealing a couple of secrets. And, and, and I, I don't know about you guys, but I know that for majority of us, we all like to be in on the secrets. I don't know about you guys, but, but if there's a secret to be had, I'm like, I kind of want to know what's going on. It kind of baits me in. I'm like, okay, what is this secret? What do I need to know? I, I, I kind of want to lean in a little bit better, especially with, with surprises. I love to be in on the secrets with surprises. Some of you guys, who likes surprises? Anybody like surprises? Some of you guys like, I love surprises. Surprises are great. My wife, on the other hand, she hates surprises. Mallory is laughing right now because she knows. I tell my wife, hey, I'm going to take you on a surprise dinner. She says, where are we going? I said, it's a surprise. Why, why would I tell you where we're going? This is a surprise. I'm taking you on a surprise date. She'll ask me up until the point of us pulling up to the restaurant, where are we going? Where are we going? Where are we going? And I'm like, babe, that's the whole point of a surprise. She's like trying to look at my Apple Maps. I can't even put it on an Apple CarPlay because then she'll like start zooming over. And I'm like, what are you doing? What are you? No, you can't know where we're going. And she just cannot, she cannot sit with a surprise. Nor can she, she hold surprises very well. I'm just, just going to be completely honest. She loves to tell people, it's out of the goodness of her heart. She's like, I just want you to know so bad. Sometimes there's a surprise, and it's for me, and I like surprises. And we'll just randomly be having conversation, just driving down the street. And she's like, okay, so do you, you want to know what the surprise is? And, and I'm like, what, what are you talking about? Like, I, I wasn't really thinking about a surprise. I was thinking about where we're going right now. She, well, well, I know you want to know what it is. And I'm like, um, I, I mean, it's a surprise. So I'm, if you want to tell me, you can, but I'm cool without knowing. I, I'm, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. She just surprises. She's like, I just got to tell you. I just, I just got to let you know. I, I love her for, for that reason. But, but secrets, oftentimes they bait us in because there's something that it feels like we're missing. There's something about a secret that makes us feel like we're enticed to want to know what this secret is. And we've been going over secrets over the past several weeks, and I think that it's important for us right now to be able to distinguish that God is not the one holding the secrets. God is not the one trying to hold anything back from you. See, I think that there are mysteries that we find by exploring and spending time with God, but, but he's not the one who's saying, I'm holding these secrets back from you, and you have to play hide and go seek and go and find them. No, I, I don't believe that that's really what's going on. And, and the first reason why I don't believe that to be true is because all of the secrets we're talking about can be found in the scriptures. And so if you're sitting here and you're like, well, that's a secret to me, then, then my encouragement to you is that we probably just need to read the scriptures more. I think that many of the things are not secrets. They're not mysteries whatsoever. And the church is so baffled and we're going back and forth over theology. But if you look into the scriptures, everything is so clear there in the scriptures. 
Maybe it's that we just need to read the Bible more. I prayed over our students on, on Tuesday that, that the students in the room who found it hard to comprehend Scripture would find it easier to comprehend Scripture. I think for so many people, we, we look into the Scripture and we're like, man, I don't even know what's going on here. I don't know the context, what's going on. But what I know is that when I read Scripture, it's a spiritual experience in which the Holy Spirit is revealing things to me and teaching things to me. And so I want to take a second right now, and you don't even have to acknowledge yourself. I want to pray over just people just in general who are finding it really hard to read the Scriptures. Because I think once the church and the body begins to read the Scriptures, we'll actually know the power that we possess. We'll actually know what heaven is actually opening up for us. So, Father, right now I'm praying over every person in this room, anyone who feels discouraged about reading the Scriptures, anyone who feels like the scriptures don't make sense to them. They're unsure where to start at. Father, the ones that, that seem so intimidated by even reading the scriptures, that, that, that get afraid to read the scriptures because they don't understand them. Father, right now I'm speaking it, that it would be made clear to them, God, that you, your Holy Spirit, would be, would be the device that would speak truth to every single person as they're reading the scripture. We wouldn't have to go look up a commentary. We wouldn't have to go look it up on Google. But God, your Holy Spirit revealing truth to your people, that's exactly where we want to be. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. If you receive that prayer... Today, go read scripture. Go try it out. I had my students right then and there. I said, let's start reading scripture right now. And we prayed over their minds right then and there. Start to read the scriptures. I, I believe that all of the secrets are actually found in the scripture. So they're not really a secret. But the enemy would love for them to appear to be a secret. So that we as the church would continue to go to church, continue believing in God, but never know the power and never know what we have access to. Never know that we actually have access and the ability to be able to cast out every single demon. Never know that we actually have a peace that surpasses all understanding, no matter what situation you're going through. The enemy would love for the church to just be a people who just show up and never actually know what they have access to. And I want you to know something. You have access. This is what opening the heavens is all about, is you realizing that there is so much more for you. But I think that the church has gotten it confused. We've confused common with truth. What was common, what my religion was, what tradition is, This is what I know about the church. This is what I've heard being a part of this church organization. And so this is where I believe. The issue with that is that it's not always common that healing is taking place in the church. So you might show up and you might feel a little bit weird like, "Ah, I'm not really sure if this healing thing is taking place. We're praying for physical healing over people's bodies right now. I'm not really sure I can get on board with that. And you might begin to doubt. And you know why? It's because in none of the churches before did you see healing. So it wasn't common in your churches before. But what I do know is that it is common in the presence of God. And so when we're in the presence of God, there should be physical healing. When we're in the presence of God, there should be mental and spiritual and emotional healing that's taking place. It doesn't matter what your church used to do. It doesn't matter what the church of the road does. I care about what the Holy Spirit is here for. And what I know is in his presence, healing takes place. And what I know is that in his his presence, giftings are given. We start getting weird like, oh, man, the giftings, like prophecy. Um, I'm not really sure about that one. I'm not really sure about speaking in tongues. That that just seems a little bit too wacky and weird for me because it wasn't common to you. But what's common to us is oftentimes not what's most powerful. It's the things that God does in the moments that blow our minds. If it was was common, it wouldn't be a miracle. But I believe that we need to normalize miracles taking place in the church. I believe we need to normalize the spiritual giftings flowing inside of each and every person inside of the body of God. I believe that these things should become normal. These things should no longer be a secret for the church. And I've got a secret that I want to reveal to us today. One in which I think the enemy has captivated our minds in so many ways and, and told us lies about. But what we find in the scriptures is that our obedience produces blessing. This is the truth. There's no other way you can cut it up. There's no other way that you can say it. There's no other way you can do it. It's just that simple. Obedience to God produces blessings in your life. What you put in is what comes out. We all know this law in every single other aspect of our lives. And when it comes down to our spirituality and when it comes down to our obedience, our obedience, I'm telling you right now this to be truth and to be fact because I believe the scriptures when they say it, that our obedience produces blessing in your life. Doesn't matter how it looks, doesn't matter when it comes, I just know this to be a fact. This is true. And so I wanna take us to a place in scripture in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse eight through nine. We've been in this space, in this portion of scripture. 
And the context of this portion of scripture is that Moses, for all of Deuteronomy, has been sharing his heart. He's been laying his heart out there for the Israelites because he knows that he will not be going into the promised land. He will not be crossing the Jordan with Joshua. He knows that this is his final address. These are the last words he wants to say to the people of God. And so a part of that is their obedience. The Israelites struggled with obedience, as we can find throughout the scriptures. But verse 8 says this, Moses speaking to them, says this, The Lord will send. Other translations say command. I love the translation that says command. Because he's in charge of it all. Command a blessing on your barns and on everything you put your hand to. He'll command a blessing on your barn. See, I grew up in the city. I didn't grow up I'm in the country. I don't really know very much about barns. I've been to a couple of barns. I've been to one or two. A couple of them were smelly. A couple of them were turned into venues for weddings. I, 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 those are the only barns that I really know. But, but what I know about barns, specifically in biblical times, is that what this is a representation of is your capacities. See, in your, your barns is where you store up things. In your barns is where you have your cattle. In your barns is where you have all of your tools. And so even in this time period, it was, it was significant of what you had of even your rights or, or your property. It was significant of that to have a bigger barn. And so we find that in the scriptures, our obedience, our obedience expands our capacity for blessing. Your obedience expands. Let me break this down for you. When we choose to be obedient, God then is able to bless us with more. When we choose to be obedient, even with the smallest of things, he expands your capacity. And so you may be here today and you may be thinking, I don't feel like my capacity has expanded in a while. Well, then maybe you should go back and you should think, am I being obedient to God? Because when we're obedient, he blesses our barns. He blesses all that we get in. He blesses all of our possessions. He blesses it all. He expands our capacities. I don't think that the issue with the church is that God's blessing is not being poured out. I think that the issue with the church is that our capacities are too small. And so he's pouring out his blessings and we're missing it because our capacities are so small. But what if the church started to expand our capacities? What if we actually started to have God thoughts? What if we actually started to love people the way that Jesus loved people? What would begin to happen to our capacities? And then he also says this, that our hands will be blessed. The work of our hands. It's going to take work. <laughs> I hope you know that. It's going to take work. I think that, that one, of the, one of the challenges for this generation, and maybe it's seen as a good thing for this generation, is that we've become so hands-off. Some of us in this room and our kids will never know what it feels like, Drex, to carry in 12 bags of groceries on one hand to, to our house, hobbling like this right here, because you just can't go back to the car. You, they'll never know that, because why? Because groceries just get delivered to our house. We, we call, we, we put it in, we put the app. Next thing you know, there's the groceries. We pick them up and we put them in. They'll never know that long driveway I used to have that I would have to walk down, and I didn't want to go back. All 20 in one hand, full send. They'll, they'll, they'll never know what it feels like to drive in rush hour with, 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 with some very aggressive drivers on the road because we Uber everywhere, so we don't even put our hands on the wheels anymore. They'll, they'll never know what it feels like to pick up a bag from Whataburger that's greasy and the honey butter chicken is just dripping out of the bag and rolling down your forearm like the oil rolling down on Moses' beard. They'll never understand what it feels like to grab that bag and your car be filled with the smell of french fries and, and it's, there's, there's oil and stuff leaking in your seat. Uh, this, they'll never know what that is because you can, you can Postmates, you can deliver it to your house. But spiritually speaking, would we not become hands-off? Would we remember that there's power in our hands? Would we remember that when we put our hands on our children, they are blessed? Some of us need to start putting our hands onto our children and start to pray over them that they would receive a full portion, a double portion of a blessing over their lives. Some of us need to put our hands actually to work. You think you've been going to work, but you've really lazily been going to work. Put your hands to your work and watch and see how the Holy Spirit starts to give you an increase and so how he starts to give you raises and how he starts to give you more authority and how he starts to give you more money. Watch and see what happens when you actually put your hands on something and watch him see how it's blessed we'd rather spend all, all of our days with our hands on our phones <laughs> instead of 
putting our hands in places. What about that business idea, that entrepreneur idea that you have that you've been waiting out on because you're afraid? Put your hands to it. Put your hands on it and watch how he blesses all of your business ventures, all your financial investments when we put our hands onto it. God is expanding our capacities, and I hope that you guys are ready to step into obedience so he can expand our capacities and bless the works of our hands. The scriptures go on and they say this. The Lord your God, once again that word bless, will bless you in the land he has given you. Oh, I love this one. I love this one. Number two, obedience positions us for blessing. See, when we're obedient, we actually step into the right places. We actually go to the right places. We actually take charge of the land that God has given to us. When we choose to be obedient, see, Moses knew a lot about this one because his people chose not to be obedient. Moses knew a lot about this one because his people actually wandered in the desert for 40 years because of their lack of obedience. And so he's saying to God's people, you guys have to get this right. You're the next generation. You have to understand that every place, when God gives you a space, you walk in and you take it. Don't hesitate. Don't go back to where you came from. Go and step onto the land that he's given to you. And some of you guys, God has given you land and territory, but you're just too afraid to step in and take it. Growing up, there was a plot to the left of my house, and there was trees on this, this plot of land. And my friends and I, we would play by the creek, and we would play in the trees and play tag and all the things on this plot of land. And one day, we come back, and all the trees have been cleared out. And then we realize that there's a building project going on, and they're actually building a home right there. So they laid the foundation, and there was concrete on the ground. And my friends and I... and Many of the other neighbors, they're questioning, like, what's going on here? Like, is someone moving into this space? Am I moving into this house? And so a month goes by and nothing has happened. All there is is just a foundation. There's just concrete slab. And um, two months goes by. So eventually, my friends and I, we start to use it as our skate park. We start to ride our bikes on it. We start to build ramps, and we get on our scooters, which was not safe whatsoever. But we would get on our scooters, and we would ride off of this ramp, and we would, we would get the little black marks in the, in, in the concrete, and, and we'd play tag on it. And it was, the, it was our new jungle gym. It was amazing. And eventually, this space, after months and months of not being used, Several people started to come on to it. The, the potheads from school came on to it. The, 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 the random people walking by just throwing trash to throw trash. And so eventually, the whole entire property was just trashed. It was just concrete and the black skid marks from, from us like, wheeling and all, all the different things we were doing on it. it that's, all, that's all that was left there. And matter of fact, they never built on that house until maybe two years after I had even left that house. And I started to think about this that several of us have already got the land. Several of us have already got the foundation because his word is a foundation. And he's just saying, won't you step onto it? Won't you put your hands to it? Won't you build something here? Won't you step in and actually take possession of the land that I've already given to you? But so many of us, the issue is that we're just giving it away to everybody else. We got so many squatters on our land. We got the guy that did us wrong last summer. We got those addictions we still got that are still taking over our minds. We got all of these things that are still on our, on our land. Did you know that your mind is land? He's giving you that, that, that land as well. And, and every time that you say, oh, I'm just always going to deal with anxiety, you're now, taking, you're now saying, I'm not going to step onto that territory God has given to me. Every single time that you say, I can never forgive them, you're not, you're not stepping onto the territory that God has given you in your heart and your emotions to be set free from some things. The land that he's given to you, your family, you always complaining and saying, well, my family's just always going to be the same. Well, look at this family right here. I know, that, the, I know that, they, that, that there were moments whenever you guys felt like, I'm not sure, I'm not sure, but we're going to stay steadfast. And now we've got families and generations right here in this house right here who didn't know God just three months ago worshiping God with everything they've got. But that only happens whenever you step out and say, I'm going to take the land that God has given to me. What is the land that God has given to you that you haven't moved on? What is it? What is that space? Whether it's because of fear, whether it's because you're lazy, whatever it might be. What is that space that God has given to you? The scriptures continue on. In Deuteronomy, 
Verse 9 says this. The Lord will establish you as his holy people. As he promised you on oath. If you keep the commands of the Lord your God. And walk in obedience to him. The Lord will establish you. I sat for a second and I just contemplated this verse. I sat for a second and I just contemplated what, 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 what does this mean for us? That he'll establish us. And what I came to and I, what I realized was that our obedience establishes us as the blessing. Our obedience to God establishes us as the blessing. Because here's what I know. When God's people crossed over the Jordan, no longer was the land the same. When they walked over into the land that was given to them, the land was no longer the same. If it was fruitful before, now it's even more fruitful. If it was safe before, it's even more safe. If it was abundant before, it's even more abundant. Because when God's people step into rooms and we step onto new territories and we step onto new lands, everyone around us gets changed. Everyone around us starts getting blessed. This is the blessing. God established you as his holy people, so walk as a righteous one. Walk as a holy one. Already set apart as a blessing. Every single time you step into your workspace, every single time you step in and you hang out with your friends, you've got to know you should be a blessing. And the people around you should be, should be blessed. The people around you should be blessed. This is a really good litmus test. Are my best friends or the people around me being blessed because of me? If not... There may be a step of obedience you need to take so that others around you can actually experience the blessing. You see, the interesting thing about the scripture, and you can put it back up there, but the interesting thing about this verse 9 right here is it says if. If. In scripture, when, when, when we see if, this, this, is, this means that hey, if this happens, there's a condition, there's a specific thing that's going to have to take place before this happens. If you obey his commands. If. You walk in obedience. And I've searched my heart and I've just prayed through this. And I feel like a lot of our issue is that we don't really believe that our obedience works. <laughs> I'm, I'm, a true, I'm a true believer in just like, try it out. <laughs> See if it works. People who know me know. I'm like, hey, try it out. The only way you're going to be able to know is if you actually try it out. This is why he says, hey, don't be lukewarm. Don't be either or. Don't do both of them. Just try one of them out. If you're going to try the sinful life, go for it. Go all in for it and see what happens and see how he returns you back to the heart of the Father. If you're going to go all in for the Father, leave behind the old and step into the new that God has given to you. But I think so many times we'd rather just appear to be obedient and actually be disobedient in the dark. <laughs> Where people just don't know and our secret no one else is ever going to know. But you know what it affects? It affects your blessings. And it affects how you're able to bless others around you when we choose to walk in disobedience. I, I, I want to I just kind of close up this time, but I want to I use an analogy that kind of helps to maybe bring all of these things together. I'm, I'm a person who thinks in pictures. And, and I want to, I Drex, can you bring this up for me really quickly? Oh, yeah, don't drop that. You can set it down right there so I don't have to. Fumble it, and then next you know it goes everywhere else. That would be terrible. Wow. All right. Let's say for this analogy specifically, this water right here, this is representative of all the blessings God has for you. He's got an abundance. He's got lots of blessings. And so, so if we go back to the beginning, our obedience, first and foremost, we understand that it expands our capacities. And so, Drex, I want you to pick up this cup. You got that cup right there. Okay, so this is, this is Drex's cup right here. This is his capacity to be able to hold blessing. Honestly, this is not a lot. This is not a ton. I know for my life personally, I'd like to be able to hold more blessing than what comes into this cup right here. But let's just say this is, this is Drex's cup. And because he has not chosen to take steps of obedience, this is all that he can take. And then, and then here's, here's the deal. He may not even get a full, a full portion of the blessing because our obedience actually also puts us in the right position. And so the blessing might be all the way over here. He's looking for the blessing all the way over there, but God has already moved on. He's already doing something new in your life, and you're just waiting for it all the way over there, but the blessing is all the way over here, and now we're missing out on the new blessing. And so then, number three, we can't even bless anybody else. 
You don't have enough to bless anybody else. I don't want what you got in that measly cup. That thing is a quarter full. I want a full portion of my blessing. Hold that cup up so everybody can see it. Jax is tall. He's holding it as high as I'm holding this right here. Already. Come on. Here's what I want you to do now. Put that down and get this cup right here. That bowl, yeah. Now this right here. This is going to represent a capacity that's growing. This is going to represent what happens when we're obedient and when God can actually pour out more blessings on our life, and then it goes in. But here's the deal. Not just that, but the position. So now when I'm all the way over here, Drex is going to come all the way over here, and he's saying, hey, wherever you go, Holy Spirit, that's where I'm going. If I'm going over here, guess what? The Holy Spirit is coming over here. Oh, I'm going over there. Wherever you go, God, I'm going there. That's where I'm going. Here we go. Here's the deal. Y'all thought this was it. Bring me up that other picture right there. We got more water. Grab that picture right there. Yeah, that one right there. There you go, Charlie. Thank you, Charlie. You're, you're great. Come on, Charlie. Bring it up here. Because here's the deal. God just keeps pouring out blessings and blessings and blessings and blessings. And it just keeps on going. And he overfills our cups. This is what happens when we choose to be obedient. When we choose to be obedient, we find that our capacities begin to grow. Right now, your, your cup is that big. But next, he's bringing a bucket. And next, he's bringing a swimming pool. And next, he's bringing more and more and more. He's got a whole ocean filled. He's pour, pouring all of his blessings out on those who say, I want to be obedient so that I can grow my capacity and so that I can be positioned in the right place so that I can experience the goodness of God. Carson, come here. Because then what happens is Carson comes in. Carson, how long have you been coming authentic? Five months. Carson's been coming for five months. Drex had shared the gospel and several times had invited you to come to Authentic for, for quite a while before you actually decided to step through the doors. And now Carson has stepped in because Drex is obedient. Because of his obedience, now Carson, you're getting blessed by it. So go ahead and scoop some of that up right there. And here's the deal. Now he's getting blessed by it too. Hey, Charlie, come here too. Come here. You met with Drex before, right? Several times. Go ahead. Scoop some out right there. He's met with him too because he's exercising his obedience in all the different ways. Hey, Logan. Logan, come here. Come here. Oh, yeah. We meet with Logan every single Friday with him and his boys. So guess what? All of them. Come on. Scoop it up. Scoop it up. And now look. Everyone else is getting blessed. This is what happens when you decide to be obedient. Our obedience blesses others. Thank you, boys. You can take that water with you. You can drink it out of that bowl. <laughs> like a big bowl of cereal. Sheesh. Hey, this is what I know, is that this word right here is about to propel you into this week. That the Holy Spirit is guiding you and he's leading you and he's reminding you of the very thing that you were encouraged on right here today. And I'm so glad that you guys decided to join us here. Hey, if you guys aren't following our social media, what are you doing? Join us right now on our social media. There's so much encouraging content and so many updates and new things that are going on right here at Authentic. We want you guys to join us right there. You can follow us on Facebook or on Instagram at Authentic City Church. And hey, for some of you guys who would like to give, we'd love for you guys to partner with us through your giving. There's a couple of ways you can give. You can go to Authentic.Church and give under the gift tab, or you can give through Venmo. Hey, I love you guys. Peace. I'll see you soon.